We've used this Hyper Freight engine lift for a lot of years, and as you can probably tell, we use it a lot on a lot of things, even other than engines. It's great for lifting anything that's heavy and that would be hard to lift just by yourself. So it's a great tool and it's been working great for us. On this old engine, we're gonna take some head bolts with washers and thread them back in, and that'll give us a good, a good attachment to the head. Now we'll connect it to the other side. We'll raise this up a bit higher. I wanna keep that centered. So the height, I want it to just be about right there so I can just link it on. We'll pull it up just so there's a little bit of tension on it. Make sure these don't go crooked. And just a little bit of tension on this so we're still able to loosen all these bolts. With tension on the back of the bolt, we'll be able to remove the motor mount. Now we can start to remove the transmission bolts from the motor. We'll release that motor mount so the engine moves more free. I'm gonna add a little bit more tension just to see where it's pulling. We'll separate the engine block from the transmission with a screwdriver just to pry it in two different directions. In this case, the bottom starter bolt needs to be removed because it goes all the way through the starter into the engine head. Now whenever I give this a tap, you can really start to see it separate. You wanna pull each of these pins separate We've got those two pins removed, and this is now moving separately, so we're gonna start to pull up a little bit. We need to get the clutch shaft disconnected so we can remove the rest of the engine. I took out the transmission mount bolt so it can move around a little bit, because if you're jacking this up and you feel anything bind, you don't wanna go any farther, you wanna stop right there, because this has a lot of power and it can bend and break things very easily. So as we're pulling this up, we're just gonna kinda move it around, make sure everything can move and kind of wiggle away from this motor mount here, which is kind of spring loading it down. So whenever we pull it up, it's gonna kind of pull up and over. It's feeling pretty free right now. So I'll keep going up a bit. The alternator mount is hitting the motor mount. So we're gonna just remove that. That'll give us more room. Now we've got a lot more room here and this can come out straight from this motor mount a lot easier. And the last thing hold to get on is this zip tie. There we go. And now we're completely free. Now that it's out of the engine compartment, I'm gonna lower it down a little bit so that the center of gravity is a bit lower and we don't have to worry about it tipping quite as much. You never want to leave your cylinder out or extended where that chrome is showing. We've actually had to completely disassemble this hydraulic jack and repolish it because we left it out. And whenever it's exposed to water and air, it'll start corroding, rusting really bad, and it won't work. So make sure you always bring this all the way back in so this is protected inside of the cylinder. We successfully got it out of the engine bay. The Harbor Freight engine lift worked great. We use it for a lot of things. It just happened in this case. We're using it for its intended purpose of taking out an engine, but it's great for lifting anything else that might be heavy or hard to lift by yourself or with multiple people. It's a great machine. As you can see, we've gotten a lot of use out of it and it really is helpful whenever you need it.